I'm criminal defense attorney Daniel Kim, uh, and I'll be talking about possession of child pornography laws. In California, the law makes it illegal to send, print, duplicate, exchange, advertise, possess, or produce child pornography. Child pornography is defined as uh, matter or material depicting the sexual conduct of people under the age of 18. Matter is defined as uh, things like film, photos, photocopies, videotapes, uh, DVDs, or any electronic storage device like a computer or an external hard drive or a thumb drive. Sexual conduct for the purposes of child pornography is anything like bestiality, uh, masturbation, uh, oral copulation, uh, anal intercourse, uh, vaginal intercourse, or urination or defecation if it's done in a, in a lewd manner. The law does not require that actual sexual conduct be depicted in the material. Pictures of children uh, naked just standing around uh, can be considered child pornography if it can be shown that the uh, purpose of those images are for sexual gratification. Now, on the other hand, uh, let's say you have uh, pictures of your own children with no clothes on just because you, you think the pictures are cute, that would not be considered child pornography. On the other hand, if someone possesses pictures of uh, someone else's children with no clothes on, that could be considered child pornography because there's no other legitimate reason to possess pictures of someone else's kids with no clothes on. The law does require that uh, in order for something to be considered child pornography, uh, the images have to be of actual people under the age of 18. So drawings of children engaged in sexual conduct are not considered child pornography because there are no children being harmed in those images. Also, images of people who are 18 years of age or older who uh, appear to be younger than 18 or who are made to appear uh, to look younger than 18 uh, also is not considered child pornography for the same reason. Also, it should be noted that if you're not aware of the fact um, that you're in possession of the child pornography uh, or you're not aware of the nature of it, then you wouldn't be found uh, in violation of the child pornography laws. Now, as far as defenses to possession of child pornography go, entrapment is one that comes up pretty often. Uh, entrapment is when someone is pressured by law enforcement to do something illegal that they wouldn't have done otherwise. And we see this in sting operations where uh, undercover law enforcement online uh, will convince or pressure somebody using their computer to uh, obtain or view child pornography. As I alluded to earlier, uh, lack of knowledge or intent is a defense that comes up often. Uh, this is something that can happen if, let's say, you unwittingly download uh, child pornography to your, your computer and uh, you have no idea that it, it's on your hard drive. Uh, in this scenario, uh, you would not be found guilty of possession of child pornography. That is, if you could show that you didn't know that you were in possession of it. This can also come up where um, say you're in possession of some images and uh, the people in those images appear to be 18 year, years of age or older, but they're not and they, they are actually younger than 18 years old. And of course, uh, if you're not in possession of child pornography and you're falsely accused, uh, you could not be found guilty. Uh, illegal search and seizure is when uh, law enforcement illegally searches a home or a computer or anything else that um, child pornography can be stored on. Uh, and we see this when law enforcement conducts searches without a search warrant, uh, or when they have a search warrant, but their search exceeds the scope of the warrant. If uh, child pornography is, is found illegally, uh, then uh, a good defense attorney would file what's called a suppression motion, uh, arguing to the court that the evidence uh, should be suppressed and the case should be dismissed. Now, as far as the consequences of a conviction of uh, possession of child pornography goes, it's important to note that possession of child pornography can be charged as a, a misdemeanor or a felony. Uh, so it's what's known as a wobbler. Uh, charged uh, as a misdemeanor, possession of child pornography carries up to one year in jail. Charged as a felony, the most serious uh, uh, child pornography laws carry up to eight years in prison. However, the most serious consequence and the biggest reason why you need to fight your case 
and fight it as hard as you can is the, the requirement that you register as a sex offender. Having to register as a sex offender can make life extremely difficult. Uh, it can include uh, extre extremely stringent uh, supervision by um, the county probation department uh, or uh, state parole. Uh, it can limit uh, where you can live. Uh, it can limit your rights to be around children, sometimes even your own children. Also, having to uh, register as a sex offender means that there's a good chance that your information uh, will be posted on the Megan's List uh, website. Under Senate Bill 384, sex crimes that are registrable fall under uh, three different categories, Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3. Misdemeanor possession of child pornography uh, falls under Tier 1. And what this means is people who've been convicted of child pornography starting in the year 2021 can petition the court to relieve them of the obligation uh, to register as sex offenders 10 years after their conviction if no jail time was served or 10 years from re their release from custody. As far as felony possession of child pornography goes, it falls under tier three. And what this means is that people who are convicted of felony child pornography cannot petition the court for this type of re relief. Senate Bill 384 uh, relief is retroactive. That means anybody who's been convicted of misdemeanor child pornography at any point in time uh, can uh, petition the court. So if you or anyone you care about uh, has been charged with uh, possession of child pornography, give us a call to Can California Defense Group and we'll discuss with you the various ways in which we can fight your case.